Hello, my name is Pradeep and I'm excited to talk about our paper which is providing SLOs for resource harvesting VMs in cloud platforms. This work was in collaboration between Microsoft Research and Microsoft Azure. Public cloud platforms like AWS, GCP and Azure offer compute resources to users as virtual machines or VMs. Users can acquire or release these VMs at any time. Interestingly, cloud platforms allow users to keep these VMs from seconds to years as well. And at the same time, also enable users to request more VMs later as well. In order to enable user growth and handle hardware failures, cloud platforms provide this illusion of infinite scalability. In other words, cloud platforms always have some unallocated resources as illustrated in the figure. Hence, it is hard to monetize the capacity in cloud platforms. To maximize their profits, cloud platforms started to offer their ideal or unallocated resources as spot VMs with relaxed SLOs. The spot VMs typically cost 50 to 90% cheaper than the regular VMs, but in exchange, cloud platforms reserve the right to evict them at any time. Key issues with these spot VMs is that they are fixed size VMs, and as a result, they may not consume all the unallocated resources on the host server as shown in the figure. To illustrate more spot VM limitations, let's go through this example. First, when a request for large spot VM comes in, it will be allocated as shown. Later, when a request for regular VM comes in and this requires more idle capacity than available on the host, this results in eviction of large spot VM to make room for the regular VM. The key result is that large spot VMs have high eviction rate. On the other hand, if you have multiple smaller spot VMs, then there is substantial overhead required for hosting many VMs as shown here. To address these limitations of spot VMs, we introduce Harvest VMs, a new class of evictable VMs. These VMs come with a minimum size in terms of their physical resources and can dynamically grow and shrink to harvest unallocated resources on the host server. Importantly, harvested VMs are only evicted when their minimum size is required for a regular VM. Currently, cloud platforms do offer another class of VMs called burstable VMs, where they can burst or grow for a brief amount of time after accumulating enough credits. But harvest VMs can grow or burst depending on number of unallocated resources on the host server and doesn't come with any artificial time limitations. To summarize our paper contributions here, first we will characterize the potential for resource harvesting and dynamics of unallocated capacity in Azure. Next, we introduce the harvest VMs and their implementation details including pricing. Following that, we provide details on how we provide SLOs for harvest VMs in terms of their survivability and amount of resources available over the time. After that, we present Harvest Hadoop, a platform implemented using Hadoop to show how to leverage these harvest VMs. Finally, we share lessons and experiences from running harvest VMs in Azure production environment. First, we analyze the resource allocation in Azure data centers from February to October 2019. In terms of methodology here, we compute the number of unallocated resources in each server based on the regular VMs running over time. Next, we check if we can allocate a hypothetical spot VM in each server and analyze how long and how many unallocated resources it could potentially get as shown in the figure. Note that our characterization shown in the paper is pessimistic in the sense that unallocated resources are more stable in practice. One of the key aspects to quantify is how long do these spot VMs can last before they get evicted. To illustrate, we plot number of servers that could host a one core spot VM in a popular region from for a minimum duration from one hour to one month. Similarly, we plot the survival rate of this respect to spot VMs on the right. The key point here is that one hour and one day lines show some recurrent patterns if you were to zoom into these graphs. To be specific, one hour line shows a diurnal pattern where nights have more unallocated capacity and similarly, one day line shows weekends have more unallocated capacity and hence, we can have more spot VMs during these times. Second point here is that spot VMs for longer periods like one month are less available and have low survival rates indicated by orange lines in these two graphs. Each region in Azure can have many clusters and these clusters within the same region can behave differently as well. To show this, like before, we have plots, we have plot servers that could host a one-core spot VM in a popular region on the left 
and within a cluster of that region on the right. Clearly, amount of unallocated resources can vary abruptly at cluster level as shown by the red arrows, whereas at region level, they are way more stable and doesn't show any abrupt changes. Please refer to the paper for the rest of the characterization. Here are the high-level takeaways of our characterization. There are many unallocated resources available for harvesting. Here, these unallocated resources show both dynamic temporal as well as spatial behavior. These unallocated resources are distributed unevenly across clusters even within the same region. In particular, smaller amount of resources are available more widely, but large amount of resources tend to last longer. There are many additional unallocated resources in each server beyond the minimum size of spot VMs. As a result, filling the unallocated capacity with spot VMs can cause many evictions and wasted resources. Hence, spot VMs are not ideal for effectively using the unallocated capacity. To address this, here we propose a new class of evictable VMs called harvest VMs that can dynamically grow or shrink to harvest as many unallocated resources as available on the host server. With harvest VMs, we can maximize the resource harvesting at each server while keeping both the evictions as well as the overheads lower. A harvest VM typically starts with a minimum size and to understand how they work, let's look at this example. At time t0, we have two regular VMs and a harvest VM with size more than its minimum. At t1, a regular VM leaves and harvest VM grows to take up that space. At T2, a new regular VM is allocated and this forces harvest VM to shrink back to its minimum size. Finally, at T3, harvest VM is evicted as its minimum size is needed for a regular VM. This is a typical life cycle of a harvest VM. Coming to its implementation, harvest VMs are based on Azure VM EXV3 specification where its minimum size typically starts with one physical core and they can assume higher minimum sizes as well like 4 cores, 8 cores, etc. In the current implementation, these VMs harvest only physical cores and are limited to at most one harvest VM per host server to avoid any resource contention between multiple harvest VMs. Changes in resources are exposed to harvest VMs through Hyper-V API. As far as pricing is concerned, Harvest VMs have same price as spot VM for their minimum size and any additional resources will cost 50% less price than resources of minimum size. In terms of their privacy, Harvest VMs doesn't leak any information about co-located VMs or their workloads. Note that Harvest VMs are currently available to internal users only. For the end users, Harvest VMs can be complex to use and hard to provision as their both availability and resource capacity can vary over time. To assess the users here, we predict the survival rate of harvest VMs and the amount of resources they are likely to receive on average and provide these pro predictions to users in the form of an SLO. Note that this SLO is a best effort statistical estimate. When users inform the desired number of harvest VMs, minimum size, USCs, this is how our SLO looks like. 85% of them may survive one hour and 35% may survive up to one month. And they are likely to receive on average of 8.5 cores over their lifetime. And this prediction is with 95% confidence interval. For user, if this SLO is not acceptable, users can change the number of VMs, region or minimum size and retry. After experimenting with multiple modeling approaches, we have settled on random forest regressor. Key features are total VMs in the cluster, allocation data, availability data, cluster characteristics like generation, number of racks, etc. Also, our model incorporates features like auto regression and moving average from ARIMA. We train our models using infrastructure of resource central system. Resource central machine learning and prediction system are described in its SOSP paper. The figure also shows how we train the model from collecting data to training the model and finally exporting the model for refer inference. To make the most out of harvest VMs, application need to adopt to the dynamic resource capacity that is need to leverage both fault tolerance for evictions as well as leverage additional resources to run any workloads. To demonstrate an application here, 
we extend Hadoop to natively use Harvest VMs. The main features of this Harvest Hadoop include it executes YAN and HDFS master process called Resource Manager and Name Node respectively on regular VMs as it might be expensive to manage failures of master. It executes a YAN, HD, YAN and HDFS worker process called Node Manager and Data Node respectively on each Harvest VM as shown in the figure. We introduce Harvest VM Manager or HVM Manager which monitors the number of resources currently available to a Harvest VM and informs the master process that is Resource Manager and Name Node of any changes. For example, if Harvest VM were to get more cores, Resource Manager or Scheduler can assign more containers to the VM. If the VM were, if the VM were to shrink, Scheduler has multiple options here. Kill some containers or run the containers in deep drive mode till the Harvest VM gets back its more cores. Our evaluation here focuses on two sets of results. First, we access the benefits of Harvest VM and accuracy of our SLOs. Second, we explore the real world implementation of Harvest VMs and Harvest Hadoop in the Azure production infrastructure. For the first part, we use Azure's cluster simulator, which executes the real VM scheduler code in assigning VMs to the physical servers. We simulate production traces and add Harvest VMs continuously to fill the cluster. As input data, we use production data from all 14 Azure regions from December 2019 to April 2020. When training our models, we use data from December 1st, 2019 to January 15, 2020. We use the other 45 days for testing our models. For our real experiment, here we deploy Harvest Hadoop in a stable private cluster with around 1700 servers and stress test using a canary cluster with around 650 servers. In stress testing, we keep creating many more VMs so that they put, uh, we can check harvest VM stability. We start the evaluation by accessing the benefits of harvest VM over spot VMs in terms of number of VMs required to fill the same amount of unallocated capacity. On the X, we have different clusters. On the Y, we have number of VMs. We can clearly see that we require many spot VMs to fill the same amount of unallocated capacity as compared to fewer harvest VMs. That brings us to the key point, which is it requires 3.7x more spot VMs on average than the harvest VM to fill the unallocated capacity across all clusters here. To show the impact of our machine learning models, here we present the comparison between our chosen model, which is random forest regressor, and a multi-layer perceptron. We have experimented with multiple machine learning models, example gradient boosting, ETS, ARIMA, and multi-layer perceptron is the one that comes closer to our model. On left, we have survival rate prediction plot. On the right, we have average course prediction plot. We have trained these models using data from all the clusters or regions for 45 days. The plot here illustrates that random forest yields an accuracy of around 98% for survival rate prediction with around mean absolute error of 0.2 cores on average for average course prediction. For context, our model here, random forest regressor, takes around 16 hours for training using 45 of data from all regions. Similar multi-layer perceptron model takes much longer to train on the same data. Here we show the predictions for harvest VMs in a cluster with significant unallocated capacity. Note that predictions come from machine learning model and actual data are from simulating the production data using simulator. The figure here shows that the predicted values matches close with actual data that is right side of that vertical line, which is testing phase. And this illustrates that our average course SLO would be accurate for this cluster. Next, we plot the error distribution of the survival rate for each horizon and aggregate it across all the clusters. As expected, our short-term predictions have lowest errors, but interestingly, long-term predictions tend to be more accurate than medium-term ones. The reason is that small load changes have larger impact when predicting medium-term survival, whereas they often get smoothened out in the long-term survival. When we average all the absolute errors here, Short-term predictions have an average mean absolute error under 2% and longer-term predictions under 6% error. Note that 
Even though there are some mispredictions or errors here, there are still useful guidelines for applications to approximate the harvest VM survival rate. The figure here also shows that errors are balanced, that is, there are as many over predictions as under predictions. Recall that harvest VM pricing model, where it costs same as spot VMs for their minimum size and any additional harvested resources will cost 50% less price than the resources at minimum size. Using this pricing model, we plot the cost comparison between harvest VMs and spot VMs. We can clearly see that spot VMs cost more than the harvest VMs and combining this fact with spot VMs significantly being cheaper than regular VMs implies that harvest VMs are not only significantly cheaper than regular VMs but also 45% cheaper than spot VMs. Finally, we present the lessons from our production deployment. First, adopting applications for harvest VMs is a main blocker as, as users' workload cannot make best out of additional cores without modifying the applications like Harvest Hub. Our current implementation only harvests CPU cores, and this may lead to VMs that cannot use some cores because memory might be the bottleneck. For example, if Harvest VM becomes 40 core 16 GB of RAM, additional cores might not utilize any memory. To address this imbalance, we are implementing ability to allow multiple harvest VMs per server by limiting each harvest VM to a maximum size. Our initial implementation of core reassignment had some unexpected side effects on regular VMs in the canary cluster. Fixing this involved using a different API to the hypervisor and this made the overheads negligible. To conclude, we presented the characterization of unallocated resources in Azure and introduced a new VM class called Harvest VMs that can harvest unallocated resources on the host dynamically. In addition, we provided SLOs for the Harvest VMs and our prediction models show that we achieve a high accuracy of around 98% for predicting survival rates. Finally, we presented details on Harvest Hadoop which can leverage Harvest VMs to run the Hadoop jobs. We have also shown that Harvest VMs are significantly cheaper than regular VMs but also 45% cheaper than spot VMs while having 73% fewer evictions. With this, I conclude and I'll take any questions now.